Big hail is possible today in northeast Texas and surrounding areas. There's a tiny chance of a tornado as well. Beyond that, spring is in full force as big storms are possible as we go into next week. Severe weather season is here, so it's time we all start paying attention. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. It's been a couple days since I've posted, and what's happened while I've been gone? Well, there was a severe weather outbreak in Georgia and Florida the other day on March 12th, and although it wasn't a big tornado outbreak, we did get at least one tornado on video that we know of. This is a video from uh, Alex Sierra in Ocala, Florida. Apparently, they were in a drive through and were hit by a tornado. I believe they're at Dunkin' Donuts here. Uh, guys, this is why it's always important to be prepared. If this guy, if Alex would have subscribed to my channel, he wouldn't be in this situation right now. He would have hit the drive through earlier. Look at that. Big storm coming through. He probably, he's, he's not thinking much about it. You know, he's in the line at Dunky Doe. He doesn't know that there's a big nader coming right down the street towards him there. And this is not a supercell, okay? It's in a line of storms. It's a linear mode. You're not going to see the tornado coming. It comes out of nowhere. In fact, I don't even know where to look right now. Man, imagine. Oh. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I'm not even kidding. I would sound the same. I would sound the same. Oh man, it busted out his uh, passenger side window. I'm surprised the windshield didn't go. He's still going. <laughs> Look, this is a guy that is scared because he wasn't prepared. I mean, come on, it's simple, guys. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite tornado videos of all time. And what's crazy is just a couple hours before this happened, I was out storm chasing or snow chasing in the Storm Seeker here in Eastern Kentucky, documenting the heavy snow. I know some of you guys watched that, but we actually did relay tornado warnings during that live stream. So once again, if you never want to get caught in the drive-through in a tornado, subscribe now with notifications on. Just like somebody's probably going to get their windshield busted out by hail today around Dallas and in northeastern Texas because they're not subscribed. Guys, we do have a slight risk of severe weather down here, and it's mainly for hail, especially around Dallas in this specific area right here. We expect gorilla hail today, which just means very big hail, possibly uh, much bigger than golf balls, maybe even approaching baseballs out there. So get ready for that. Let's look at the timing and progression of these storms. We're looking at what the radar could look like as we go into the future. Date and times always about Above my head there in Eastern time. Here we are around 1 p.m. Nothing going on. It's getting warm. It's getting hot. It's actually, it's like a nice day outside, you think? And then bada bing, bada boom, supercells start going up here around 7 to 8 p.m. Right around Dallas. Look at this. A big area of supercell thunderstorms possible here. Also down near College Station. Houston, you guys might get some of this action. And then of course, all the way up into northeastern Texas around Texarkana as well. These are going to be very strong storms with frequent cloud to ground lightning, heavy rain, and of course that monster hail potential. The tornado threat is very low with this, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a funnel cloud or maybe a quick spin up out there. My main thing is if I live out here anywhere in that uh, slight risk zone, I am making sure I'm putting my car in the garage or in the carport because things are gonna get gnarly out there with the hailstones, especially early in the storm setup. Now, by the time we get out here at 2 a.m. early tomorrow morning, once these storms get into Arkansas, Louisiana, and portions of southeastern Texas, uh, this is mainly just gonna to be a heavy rain threat, okay? We're really not looking at hail. The storms are going to progress down into the New Orleans area around 8 a.m. tomorrow. Maybe some strong winds, some small hail, but we're not expecting much in the way of severe weather as this progresses through the deep south. Now, once this does get back into Florida tomorrow, we do have a little chance of some bigger storms between Tampa and Miami. But once again, there's nothing really crazy going on here. Some small hail, strong winds, uh, some very heavy rain, certainly and maybe some cloud of ground lightning, but uh, the severe weather threat is pretty low there. The main thing that we're watching today is this over here. Once again, if you are especially right where these storms first start popping up between 7, 8, 9, and 10 p.m., uh, that's where I'm most concerned about the big monster gorilla hailstones. So make sure you're prepared for that. All right, and we actually have some stuff to talk about over here in the Pacific Northwest and along the West Coast, and guess what it is? Rain. As I push this forward, you can see, you know, 6, 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. Uh, heavy rain is going to be possible from northwestern portions of California up through Oregon and, of course, up here into Washington and the southern portions of British Columbia. In the higher elevations, you see those blues peeking in. That is going to be some heavy snow, okay? But the vast majority of us are going to see that rain, heavy rain on the western side of the mountains and then uh, some moderate rain for everybody else. And that's going to be getting out of here by 1 p.m. on March 15. And then we're 
going to be stuck in this pattern of off and on showers and snow showers as we go all the way through the 17th. But look at this. Some heavy rain totals are going to be possible down here west of Bend. Once again, in the higher elevations, close to three inches to the west of Seattle, maybe close to four inches in some of these places. And remember, a lot of this is going to fall as snow, especially in the very high elevations. But a lot of it is rain too. So flash flooding is going to be a problem. Mudslides are going to be a problem. Now, if you're in Seattle, half an inch of rain. If you're in Olympia, maybe an inch. Okay, if you're down here in the valleys around Portland down to Salem, we're talking about three quarters of an inch of rain. A lot of the heavier stuff's gonna happen up on the Cascades. All right, let's talk about the next seven days, shall we? Let's look at the whole US, the big picture here. Starting off early in the morning tomorrow, we do have that area of showers and thunderstorms moving through the deep south. Got our heavy rain and snow over here in the Pacific Northwest. What happens if we push that out of the way as we get into Wednesday around 2 p.m.? Some of that rain is gonna be over here in Florida, all the way up into the southeastern portions of South Carolina. Carolina and North Carolina. Uh, once again, nothing severe expected here. It's just annoying, okay? Look at this little ridge we got, okay? If it wasn't for our little cutoff lows that are coming through or our blue ball weather pattern, if you know, you know, we wouldn't be dealing with this, okay? Everybody would be having fun in the sun under the ridge. But we do have these disruptive, annoying little uh, cutoff low pressure systems that are coming through. Here's another one on Friday, possibly some thunderstorms down here in Louisiana and Mississippi. And then on the northern side, we're going to have a real cold rain rain that is going to try to turn into snow in the northeast. Look at this, northeast Ohio, 11 a.m. on Saturday, March 19. I think we're going to be seeing snow possibly all the way up through Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and of course uh, in Maine as well with uh, maybe even a couple inches of snow, four or five inches by the time that's all said and done. And that is going to bring down some chillier air down into the Great Lakes regions once again. As annoying as it is, it's reality, okay? It's here with us. We've got multiple little cutoff lows. But look at this, possibly good news. Big ridge forming up in the Midwest, right? We got spring-like temperatures coming. We've got all this good stuff, but oh, wait. Monday, March 21st. Um, this is going to turn into a big storm system, I believe, that is going to be our next big storm that we have to pay a lot of attention to. All right, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this next storm does look very concerning if it actually verifies. Watch this, around March 20, we have that big trough come into the West Coast. It's digging down, it's getting deeper, and now we have a very significant neutral trough coming through the central portion of the US. And guys, I'm telling you right now, this is just opening the gates for Gulf of Mexico moisture to come up uh, and a lot of heat okay it's gonna feel nice out for a lot of the southeastern US uh, during this time period uh, but what's happening is some cold air is diving down inside of this and where they meet here uh, we do have the chance for some big-time severe weather and look at this this goes negatively tilted as it gets into uh, the more eastern uh, parts of the US and this is gonna be a big storm guys I don't care what happens as far as like little changes with the models as we go forward something big is gonna come from this I don't know if it's gonna be a big Big, you know, severe weather outbreak, uh, possibly a snowstorm up north, uh, maybe just a big disturbance that brings a lot of wind and rain to a lot of people. But for the most part, I believe that this is going to be a big storm. Right now, it looks like a severe weather maker, possibly a big tornado maker. Uh, once again, early next week, Monday through Wednesday, as we get into March 21st through the 23rd. Look at this. We got plenty of cape out there, convective, available, potential energy. It's abundant around 8 p.m. on March 21st here in Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, over 2,000 joules per kilogram. That's a juicy atmosphere, okay? And it's just waiting to get wrung and squeezed out and all that nadir juice is gonna be fallen in the form of potential actual tornadoes here in Oklahoma and Texas as we get into early next week. Now remember, this is 190 hours away. Lots of things could change, but what do we do here on this channel? We look at all of the threats. We talk about all the possibilities. I would go ahead and start, uh, you know, preparing for a potential severe weather outbreak here because we might as well anyways, right? It's severe weather season. And it's eventually going to happen. If it's not this one, it'll be the next one. And look at that uh, cape as it makes it all the way over to the East Coast as well. It's a lot less pronounced over here, but once again, things can change. I think that this has the potential to be a multi-day severe weather event that affects a lot of people in this area right here. Let's look at that instantaneous flash rate. This will show us kind of where the storms could pop up. Look at that. 2 p.m. March 21st. If this scenario actually comes to fruition, we're talking about supercell thunderstorms from Louisiana all the way up through Oklahoma, potentially causing straight line damaging winds large hail and tornadoes and that is going to progress to the east and potentially make it down into Mississippi and 
Alabama as well on Tuesday. And then once again, I think the possibility is there for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina to even have a little problem out of this if there's enough energy left as we get into Wednesday. So once again, I'm just talking here. We are not ringing the bells. I'm not saying that this is certainly going to be a big deal, a big tornado outbreak or anything like that. But man, it certainly looks like it has the potential to be a very strong system. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Make sure you're not in any drive throughs during a tornado warning during this, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. A huge shout out to our members over here. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, guys. Very small chance that I go live tonight. I don't know. We do have all of our storm chasers out there. There is a chance for some supercells, small chance for tornadoes. But let me know down in the comments if you really want to see us go live. I'm going to consider it. Otherwise, just make sure you follow me on Twitter for live updates over there. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.